uh, this next night and that I was going to be seen, um, who all held to the challenge that I gave yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I gave a challenge encouraging you all um, to dedicate just five minutes of your time, just five little minutes to just read in a passage um, from the Bible. And yesterday uh, we read Psalm 23. And I told you that I was going to come back today and ask you, did you read a passage for just five minutes? And uh, because my main goal is to try to get you into the word of God a little bit more, even even if it's just for five minutes a day. And so today what I want to go through with you all is I want to read a little bit from Proverbs chapter three. So as I said yesterday, uh, you know, we can spend all day and for hours on social media at times. You guys know that. And I'm not talking about you because God knows I could be right in the same boat with you. And we can spend hours watching a movie, you know, but for some reason, when it comes to getting into the word of God just a little bit, you know, uh, we tend to get sleepy at times. I know sometimes I do. So I'm encouraging you all to sit with me just for about five minutes and let's be encouraged and go through a passage in the Bible. I want to talk to you all about something that happened a little bit earlier today. Uh, I'm seeing people come in. Can you all hear me? I want to make sure my volume's turned up. Who was with me? Um, someone says, is this another weekly Bible study? Yes, baby. Actually, it was just yesterday uh, that I challenged everyone to spend five minutes just reading um, uh, one scripture in the Bible, just five minutes. And so this is actually a follow up from yesterday. I told you all that I would be back. Who's here from yesterday? If you were here from yesterday, just let me know. Just say I was here. If anyone was here yesterday, let me just just let me know I was here. I'm seeing a lot of comments come through already. I see Susie. OK, I see Marion. OK, so I see Sashore saying I was here. So I told you I was going to ask you, did you take the challenge to read for five minutes? Sasha, I see your name in here. So um, I see Gifted Within. I see Anne Marie. So who can tell me now? You guys got to answer honestly. I see Davis. Did you take just five minutes out of your schedule, just five minutes to sit, either read your Bible, pray, meditate, sing praises and worship to God? Did you did you take five minutes to do that? OK, David said I did. OK, good, baby. Did anyone else? Susie said I did. OK, Susie said I'm in his word now. Someone says, thank you. I missed that. Glad to be here. You can watch the replay, baby. It's um, I'm pretty sure it's up on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram I know I'll have it on my podcast a little bit later tonight. Um, uh, Taria, that's a beautiful name, by the way, baby. She says, yes, yeah, she read John 17. Good. Lisa girl said, yes. Anyone else? Because I told you I was coming back on here. I wasn't going to lie to you. I said I was going to come back the next night and I'm going to try to do this as many nights as God allows me to give or take around seven, seven, 15 or so just to check on you guys and see, are you spending just five minutes? Anyone else? And Marie says she was about to. I appreciate your honesty, baby. So you can read through with me right now. And and um, um, Vanessa um, and Vanessa, I think you just joined my text community platform. I think I just sent you a message. Vanessa says, yes, it was an amazing moment of freedom um, from the daily grind. I love hearing that. I love it. So let's spend another five minutes. Let's just spend five minutes going through another passage. I want to talk about the benefits of wisdom the benefits of wisdom. And we're going to read, if you guys have your Bibles, turn on over to Proverbs chapter three. Now, if you're not really into your Bible, that's okay. You know, you can just still read along with us just a little bit. It's not going to hurt you. Um, there's such benefits to wisdom that I don't know if we truly understand that all of our answers are right here. Everything that we're searching for and we're looking for is right here. Now, for those who don't know me, my name is Zendra Glass. Everyone calls me Z. And I'm not trying to be some religious woman that's forcing anything on you. But God knows I pray for you all all the time. In fact, I was praying for you all even before I started this live. God knows I do. I have no bad intentions for you whatsoever. I just want you to get some of this knowledge into you so you can know how to deal with the things that come your way in life. And get this, not only deal with things, but how to start thriving. How to start thriving in life. Now, for those of you who, who um, have already joined my retreat, you know, I have a 12 week retreat that I just announced, you know, spending 12 weeks with me. That's going to be a long time to be spending together. Uh, but you already know what I'm talking about um, for those who've already signed up for that or at least signed up for my Zoom call. So let, let's talk a little bit about Proverbs chapter three. And the reason I want to go into this, I had a mentorship um, session earlier today 
and um, it was with entrepreneurs. And uh, some of them were a little down about some things because things weren't going quite as they wanted to. And the meeting started off one way. You can see a couple of them kind of looking kind of gloom, kind of down, because there were some situations that happened. I won't go into detail because I respect people's privacy. By the time that meeting was over, when I tell you there was nothing but tears and smiles and rejoicing, I mean, they was ready to just get on with their day and get going, you know? But what was the difference? What changed it? Now, I did spend a good hour and a half talking with them, right? But you, you want to know what changed it? Wisdom. Wisdom is the wisdom. I spent some time going through some passages with them. I spent some time helping them to see some things, and it changed their entire perspective. So sometimes it's just the wisdom, you know, sometimes in situations and I know I'm drifting for a minute, but I want to say this to somebody because this is what I told them earlier, uh, especially one or two of them who was worried about finances and money and bringing in money for their company and this and that. There's not a shortage of, of, of the money out there. There's a shortage of the knowledge in terms of how to go about getting it. So just even me having that little bit of a conversation with them sort of pivoted some things the way they were thinking. I won't go through all the detail, but it was a powerful conversation, but it was centered around wisdom, seeking the wisdom in the presence of God to give us direction in our lives, not just spiritually, but also in our finances and our business and in many areas. So anyway, I won't go into all of that. I don't know if anybody even want me talking about business or what have you, but I do do a lot of business uh, coaching as well. And I just wanted to throw that out there. But let me read a little bit of Proverbs chapter three. And uh, then I want to tell you a very personal story that I shared with them earlier today. I wasn't planning on sharing and I believe it'll bless you. So uh, someone says, I'm loving the retreat so far. I'm so happy I made the decision to join. Samantha, thank you, baby. I'm so glad to have you in there. I told you that it's a, it's, it's a tough 12 weeks. The first three weeks is just on figuring out who the heck you are. And uh, I'm assuming you went through the warm up exercises and I'll be looking forward to seeing you Monday when I go live inside of the retreat. But baby, I'm so glad to hear you say that. God knows I'm putting my heart, sweat and tears and prayers into this retreat. And I'm praying that by the time these 12 weeks are up, Samantha, that you don't even recognize who you are anymore. So that really, really encourages my heart to see that you've uh, joined the retreat. Let's start off with uh, Proverbs um, chapter three. You guys turn over to Proverbs chapter three and let's read a little bit of it. Y'all ready? Is everybody ready? OK, just say ready so I can make sure that my screen didn't freeze up on me. OK, let me see from this platform. I want to make sure that this is working. So someone just type in the words ready and that way I'll know. OK, Samantha, I see that you said you're ready on your side. So here on my YouTube page, um, let's see here. Um, uh, Vanessa says, appreciate you. Sorry, I missed the retreat. You didn't miss the retreat, baby. The official uh, lunch day for it is actually this coming Monday. I just allowed some people to come in early just to start doing some warm up exercises. So you can always go to zenjaglass.com and sign up um, and um, uh, or even in my bio, there's a link you can click on and you can meet and talk with me tomorrow. I'm going to be meeting people all day tomorrow, welcoming them to the retreat. So that link is right there in my bio. Um, uh, somewhere on the platforms, you'll find it. But it's also on my website, so I can have a Zoom meeting with you just to talk to you a little bit and welcome you. But let's turn to Proverbs chapter three, and I want to read a little bit from this. So Proverbs three said, uh, starts off saying, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Now that's interesting. Now, you don't really hear me talking too much about prosperity. And I know a lot of a lot of people sometimes frown on that when they hear about prosperity from the Bible because they start thinking, OK, I don't want to hear about this prosperity ministry as though it's something wrong with God prospering us. You guys, God desires to prosper us. He really does. And I don't know how, but some kind of way, some kind of way. Many of us, I'll just speak for myself, there's times that I thought I was walking in humility by not accepting the prosperity that God wants to bring into my life or even not not really diving further into it to, to, to really engage in, wow, how does God desire to prosper me? Sometimes we think it's something wrong with that, but it's actually all through the Bible. You know, I talked about that earlier today with the entrepreneurs when we went through the book of Job and we talked about why is it that at, at the end, the Bible lists specifically how how God gave him double and how God blessed his cattle and his herds and da, 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 da. Why did the Bible list all of that if none of that is important to God? But anyway, let's keep reading. So Proverbs chapter three says, uh, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. 
write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Now, remember yesterday when I was talking to you all, remember I said when you read a passage, how you want to slow down a minute. When you read it, you want to slow down just a minute and you want to make sure that whatever you're reading, you want to make sure that you meditate on it a little bit and re- get a really good understanding of what 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 it's talking about. So it just said, let love and faithfulness. Listen to this. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Did you catch that? Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. What do you all think that means? Let love and faithfulness never leave you. But then it says, bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. How do you write something on the tablet of your heart? Now, while you guys are answering that, I forgot to share this link really quickly. Sometimes I forget to share this link into my community. It says, um, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. What does that mean? Someone give me someone give me some answers in here. So, okay, I see someone saying it's good point, Z. What does it mean if you're going to write love and faithfulness on the tablet of your heart? Let me see some words, some comments in here. What does that mean? Someone says, speak it with your whole heart. Okay, that's good. Speak it with your whole heart. What else does that mean? If you're going to let love and faithfulness, if you're going to write that on the tablet of your heart, what does that look like? Somebody give me one more answer. Okay, I love that. So I think that's Carla says, memorize it. There you go, baby. There you go. So memorize it. What else does it mean to write it on the tablet of your heart? Someone says, um, speak with love. Someone says, keep it in your heart. There you go, Mama uh, uh, Matilda. Keep it in your heart and live by it daily. Carla says to speak the word. I love that. So let's keep reading with this a little bit. So write it on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Now let's read verse five together. Now I'm not going to read to you too long, but I want you guys to get this in you. Let's read verse five for those who are just joining. I'm in Proverbs chapter three. And um, if you were with me yesterday, uh, last night, I said I was going to go live again tonight. Um, And I'm just trying to get you guys to spend five minutes, just five little minutes, learning something about the word of God so you can write it on the tablet of your heart. That way, when the enemy comes at you a certain kind of way, you got something to push against and fight them with. Now, if you all saw my podcast the other day that I did called Spiritual Warfare, I think I did that a week or two ago. Go back and watch that one. And it's a really good demonstration of how to fight in the spirit when the enemy comes against you. So let's keep reading. So Proverbs chapter three, verse five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Now, let's pause another minute. What does this mean? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. What is what is the word trying to teach us? He will make your path straight. What does that mean? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Someone tell me what that means. Okay, Carla says, do not trust your feelings. Carla, baby, you know, you said that. Uh, Who is this? Learn what Tara says. Love you. Love you, too, baby. Uh, Mama Matilda says, allow the Holy Spirit to order your steps. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Someone says it might mean that you have those things always right at hand to help you respond in those ways all the time. Great point, Amy. Great point. Uh, Gifted Within says do not worry. Right. Stacy said depend on God for everything. I like that. I like that. Uh, Vanessa said always bring it, bring it forward. That's some good stuff. So now let's keep reading. So you see how you see how when you read a little bit, then you stop and you ponder Um, 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 Benjamin says, watch out for evil. Yes. You see how you ponder on it a little bit. Don't just read through it and keep going for the sake of saying, well, I read for five minutes. I'm done. Spend some time on it. Sometimes I'll sit and just meditate on a passage for honestly, it could be hours. We just meditate and, 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 and let it soak and let it get into your spirit so that it makes sense to you. 
Um, May said um, to remember his ways are not our ways. Um, seek his face always and he will order your steps. May I love that. I love that. And may I hope that you're enjoying the retreat as well. Um, um, uh, I, I love seeing that you're part of this live as well. And I'll be seeing you on Monday when we have our next meeting. OK, so let me read on just a little bit more. Where did I leave off? So uh, do not be wise in your own eyes. This is verse seven. Uh, Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Then in verse nine, it says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. Now, that's interesting. And do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Now, we got to stop on that one for a moment. Why would it say the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in? What in the world is that all about? I want to see. Can I get a comment or two on that one? Uh, Amy says, by trusting in God, you will have guidance on all things. And that would make the path easier and straight and not curvy and more difficult. Yes. Very good point. Carla says he cares so much. What, what else does it mean to because because the Lord, um, it says, uh, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Can anyone to OK, Carla says his love is so great. Anyone else got something on that? What does that mean? OK, Carla says he wants good things for you. Yes, that's a good one. Um. Um, uh, Mickey says, uh, and I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your, no, your name wrong, if it's Mikey or Mickey, says he loves us too much to let us go the wrong way. Ooh, that's powerful. That's a good one. Because God sure had to deal with me when I was going down the wrong path with my prideful butt, some things I was getting involved in. Um, learn what Tyra says, discipline, uh, discipline course corrects us for destiny. Ooh, that's powerful. That's powerful. Sky says he corrects who he loves. You will walk in ways and not your fleshy ways is what Mercedes says. Mama uh, Matilda says course correction. Janice, I like that you said it's his way of protecting us. Um, Gifted Within says he's training us to walk in his ways and never depart from it when we are older. Oh, I love Nicole what you just said. His love is reckless. There's a beautiful song out there called The Reckless Love of God. I love it. And I love the way you put that. Uh, Vanessa says God orders our steps, which means he may have to pull our <laughs> I like that, Vanessa. <laughs> he said he may have to pull our coat real quick. OK, Erica says he takes us through what we need so that we can be more successful. Um, and Lisa girl says he is he is GPS for our direction to his kingdom. Say it, baby. Say it. So let's read a little bit more because my challenge for you guys is just can you just spend just five minutes? Now I know I've gone over five minutes. So I guess I'll say seven minutes. Can you just spend maybe five or six or seven minutes just getting in the word for a little bit every day and letting it minister to your heart? But let me read on a little bit more. So now we're in verse 13. It says, now listen to this. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. The man who gains understanding for she is more profitable than silver. And yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Whoa, what is this talking about? Let's read that again. I'm in Proverbs 3 for those who are just joining, and I'm in verse 13. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. For she is more profitable than silver. And yields better returns than gold. How is that even possible, you guys? This is referring to wisdom. She's more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. I want to know, can somebody break that down? What does this mean that wisdom is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold? I don't know about you guys, but gold is pretty high right now. How is it that wisdom can yield a better return than gold? And how can wisdom be more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her? I really got to hear some comments on this one. Uh, I, so Valerie saying, hello, woman of God. Hey, Val. So, OK, May says wisdom is priceless. Amy says wisdom is more valuable than money. Wisdom is the ultimate goal for us. Say it, Amy. Say it again, baby. Absolutely. 
Anybody else has anything else to say on that? How in the world, you guys, let this soak in a second. How in the world can wisdom be more profitable than silver and yield a better return than gold? How can wisdom be more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with wisdom? Somebody else give me something else here. Uh, Gifted says wisdom from the most high can get, get us through hard times. That's right. Amy says wisdom brings peace. I love that. Faith says wisdom is a gift of God. Leonard says this only happens when you understand wisdom. Come on, Leonard. Come on, baby. Tanya said because it's within. Um, user says I love you, sister. You're such a blessing. Thank you, baby. Uh, Gifted within says wisdom gets us through. Faith says wisdom is, is a gift only God can give. Mikey says things are temporary. Oh, I like that. I like that. Wisdom is lasting. So what you're teaching us at this moment is to break down the word and consume it. That's more profitable. Yes. Yes. Tanya, thank you, baby, for saying you're a blessing. Uh, Star says without wisdom, you will fumble everything God has ordained for you. Wisdom is everlasting. That's such a powerful comment you just gave, Star. Love it, love it, love it. Lisa says, I saw my grandmother's love and wisdom that God had brought her through. Because wisdom is when we apply God's word to our lives is what um, Mercilee just says. Uh, wisdom's indestructible and builds a godly life, including wealth. That's right. That's right. Wisdom. Ooh, ooh, Omari, you said a powerful thing. Omari said wisdom is eternal. Wisdom cannot be, um, I, I think he meant to say delayed. Wisdom cannot be delayed like, like cash. I love that. Wisdom help us to navigate towards an abundant life is what May said. So you guys see how you're breaking this down? You guys can be doing this right now. You see how that's helping? Do, do you understand why I'm challenging you to just spend five minutes just to soak and get into your word? Do you see the value in that? This is more valuable than, than going out there right now trying to figure out a way. I got to figure out a way to, to make some money. I got to get some money. Gotta, you sit your little butt right here, and I mean that with love. You sit your little butt for a little bit, and you dive into some of this treasure. The Bible teaches us to search for wisdom as though for hidden treasure. That's why I'm having this study with you guys right now. I've been in this treasure chest for years, and I'm trying my best to tell you, baby, all of the secrets are right in here. Some of my best, best, best ideas and secrets and things that God has shown me in the spirit, ideas he's given me, creativity he's given me. It's because I got my butt upstairs in that closet singing praises to God. And yeah, I'm a business owner. I run a company and I got staff and I have bills to pay and all of that. But what you don't know is I have my butt on that floor, even in my office before I get started. God, give me the wisdom. Show me the way to go. Because if you guys know your word, the word says there's a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to death. So I go before him. God, you're the CEO of this company. You're the one running things. You give me wisdom and give me discernment. Show me the path that's for me. Seeking that wisdom. And when he begins to pour, he pours it. That's why you got to get into the word. Let me read a little bit more because I know. A lot of people don't be wanting to hear about the Bible all night, but let me just read a little bit more. Where do we leave off? For those who are just joining, um, I'm challenging everyone to spend five minutes every night into the word. Just five minutes, five little minutes. And so I'm honoring my word by saying sometime between seven and seven thirty, I will go live and talk to you all. So anyway, we're in Proverbs chapter three and you all are teaching me. Because I'm asking you questions and you're giving some good answers. So where do we leave off? In um, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, we talked about wisdom. She's more profitable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Now look at verse 16. This is really good. This is talking about wisdom. Long life is in her right hand. And in her left hand are riches and honor. Whoa. Long life is in her right hand. And in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. And some Bibles would say lead to peace. Now I want someone to break that down. What does this mean that long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor? We're talking about wisdom. And then it says her ways are pleasant ways and all 
all her paths are peace. So I want to break that down for me. Okay, let me read. Let me read here. So, yes, this community fellowship is necessary. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you. Faith says love it. What does it mean when it's saying long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor? What does that mean? You send you says that's awesome. What, what, what is this little secret that God is trying to tell us? Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. What does that mean? Come on, somebody give me something. Janice says God is pleased with her. That's good. That's good. I look at the enduring word summary. Okay, that's good. Someone give me something. What does that mean? Long life is it? Someone says what scriptures is. I'm reading from Proverbs chapter three. I'm reading out of the NIV um, and probably tomorrow I'm going to read out of the King James version so I can have different versions I'm reading from. What does this mean? Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. The, the next verse says her ways are pleasant ways. All her paths are peace. What does that mean? There you go. Butter Brian just said it. Wisdom brings prosperity. Wisdom brings wealth. Uh, things being added for seeking him first. There you go. Being patient is your reward. That says she is blessed. Yes. May says the balance. Oh, I like that you used the word balance, May. May said the, the balance of abundant life. Yes, 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 yes. Gifted within says opposite of being naive. Wisdom is like self-defense against the evils of the world. Come on. As we walk closer to God and retain the word, we gain wisdom, understanding and peace. Someone says our hands are blessed. That's what Carla said. Um, I uh, blink says uh, wisdom is confirmation. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you all for the flowers and roses and badges. Please don't think I'm not seeing it. I appreciate it, baby. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you sending that. So let's read just a little bit further. Hang with me just another minute, you guys, and I'll let you get back to your social media scrolling. And, and then I actually got to go live on my other platform, which is, um, which platforms am I on now? Because I'm on a couple platforms right now. I think it's Facebook and I want to say it's Instagram. Um, uh, I've got a teach this on, on that as well. So I got to jump on another platform, but let's keep it going. So where was I at? Um, and then verse 18 says, she is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. That's why I'm telling you to get in this, you guys. Let's read on down a little bit further. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the deeps were divided. And the clouds let drop the dew. Now listen to this verse 21. My son, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight, for they will be life for you and ornament to grace around your neck. So did you catch that? He's saying preserve sound judgment and discernment. Too many times we run ahead doing some things without really getting that discernment. That's why for those of you who are um, uh, a part of the, the necessary retreat um, uh, that I just launched, a 12 week retreat, you'll notice that I'm making everybody the first couple of days. You're going through this series of lessons in there that's teaching you about who you are and getting that discernment. You have to have some discernment so you can know the right decisions to make. So you're not chasing seeds and running after every opportunity that comes your way. So you're not up anxious and worried about mess because you have clear direction and you have a focus. So it says, my son, it says, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. Do not let sound judgment and discernment. You all know what discernment is? Don't let discernment out of your sight. Now, let's see why that's important. Verse 22, for they will be life for you. L-I-F-E, they will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Now listen to verse 23. Then you will go on your way in safety, uh-oh, and your foot will not stumble. Are you guys catching this? When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Ooh, that's powerful. You will have no fear of sudden disaster 
or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. I'm going to stop there because it goes on down a little bit more. And I, and I, and I challenge you guys to read for about five to seven minutes. And I know some of you guys may be thinking, well, Z, you read longer. That was more like 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop there because I know not too many people can handle too much, but I just wanted to give you a little taste. I want to hear a comment on this. This is talking about preserving sound judgment and discernment, gracing it around your neck. And it says, when you lie down, you will go on. It says you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. That's interesting. You see how I'm stopping and I'm pondering on this. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Really? So you mean telling me no matter what's going on, God is saying that if I embrace sound judgment and discernment, if I embrace wisdom, the benefits of wisdom, I'm able to lie down and not be afraid. It says when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Does anyone want some sweet sleep? How can your sleep? Let me ask you that. How can your sleep be sweet? How can what do they mean by that? When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. You will have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked for the Lord would be your confidence. That'll be the last question I ask you guys and I'll close it out. How can your sleep be sweet? Someone give me an answer on that. Someone says peaceful. Yes. Come on, Stacy. Stacy said peaceful sleep. Portia says nothing is bothering you. Maureen says, surrendering it all to him. Uh, Gifted within says, yes, because fear does not come from the most high. Come on. Come on, you guys. Uh, Faith says, that's her nightly prayers, Proverbs 324. Someone says, having a bad night, please pray for me. Well, baby, I pray that this helps you. I really do. Um, You've trusted God with your rest. Oh, I like how you put that, LaShondra. Marv says, cast all burdens onto the Lord. Your sleep could be sweet because you're operating in the supernatural. You better say it. You better say it. And Lisa girl says, just like you said yesterday about the shepherds protecting the sheep. That's good. You, you paid careful attention yesterday. That's right. We talked about that yesterday. When you have his presence, give it all to God and leave it to him. Faith says he will keep you safe. Um, uh, Miss, Miss Boo says restful and sound sleep. Uh, May says never act or speak ahead without using judgment and discernment. Thus, no regrets. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Someone says, can you see a prayer for me waiting on my college results? I will definitely do a prayer for you, baby. I absolutely will. I absolutely will. I pray that this has been helpful for you all. We just read Proverbs chapter three. We got all the way up to verse 26. Now I'm going to ask you the same thing again. Can you please commit to just spending five minutes? Just five little minutes of your time soaking yourself into the word of God. And, and you can do it however you want. But for those who feel like they need a little guidance and a, and a little help, you saw how I read it. I stopped. I paused. I considered. I pondered on what I just read related to an area of my life. S- excuse me. Soak it in. Write it on the tablet of your heart. Right. And then you go to the next verse. When you continue to do this over time, you're going to find yourself wanting to read more and more and more. And you're going to find yourself as you start going through things in life. Oh, baby, you're going to be fighting your battles a little different. You're going to be able to look at things completely different. Remember, I told you all earlier when I said I had my mentorship session today on Wednesdays, I meet with entrepreneurs and uh, some of them were having some tough weeks. And by the time the call was over, the Zoom call, when I tell you they were I hope some of them are on this right now. When I tell you some of them were so incredibly excited, um, it was just absolutely unreal. But uh, as I said before, what, what changed it is being exposed to wisdom, getting some knowledge into them and understanding how God actually works in things. Now, I'm going to share this with somebody. I wasn't planning on sharing this, but I shared this in this meeting with them earlier. And they said that it helped them. If anyone right now, and now I, I realize this part may only relate to just one person, one or two people. If anyone feels like, man, because uh, this is what one of them expressed earlier today in our mentorship session. She said, you know, um, Z, I've just been praying out to God and asking for wisdom and guidance and just really trying to get the right direction and flow. But I'm just... You know, this this thing I was really hoping and praying for. I don't want to go through details because I respect their privacy. But she says, Z, it just didn't happen. And I just been 
you know, I still praise and love God, but just heartbroken by it. And, you know, I really could have used that, used that extra funding. And, you know, I just kind of let her get it all out. And by the time we finished going through a couple passages and, and talking to her, I was reminded of a story about my son before he passed away. You all know I lost my son as I was writing my book, Necessary. That's a whole nother subject because I did not think that God was going to allow me to go through that process. But I was telling her, I said, you know, what's interesting, I says, I remember a story about my son. It was the last um, holiday that we got to spend with him. And he really, really, really wanted this laptop computer. And it was a certain type of a computer. It was like an iPad or something that he wanted. And he was worried about getting it and trying his best to get it and trying to convince us, you know, how we need to get it. It's on sale. And they got all these clearances and things going on. It was a very expensive computer. And um, it got to a point where he was just so worried about it. And he was literally about to drain his whole account just to get it himself. He barely had enough money to get it all. And here he is going through his, you know, getting ready to go through his bone marrow transplant. He was already weak and going through some things. And uh, I just remember, th this story actually turns out to be something good. So just follow me a moment. I'm going somewhere with this. He was just so distraught that... Um, he didn't understand why we didn't get it for him. And he's just like, this is what I really want. And, and man, it's just got all the features I needed and it goes so much faster. And so he literally got to a point where he was just like, I don't, he was just very down about it. Just feeling like, man, do you guys even hear me? Are you listening? This would be really good for me. Well, what he didn't know, we had already gotten it and it was already upstairs being hidden away. We had already gotten it. And he's sitting there worrying and stressing and trying to figure out how he's going to get it trying to figure out, you know, uh, how can I do this and that to make it happen? Feeling almost like we wasn't listening to him or didn't care or what have you. And you should see him on that holiday morning, one of the last holidays we spent with him. Uh, and we didn't know it would be the last holiday. Let me make that clear because we had no indication at that time that we were going to lose our son. So I just want to be clear. We were not being harsh. We just didn't know. And I'll never forget, he sat right there on those stairs. And we, we, we even kept the gift kind of hidden away. And at the very end, we bought it out and gave it to him. He was so excited, just like he couldn't believe it. He was just like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe you. Get now, the point that I'm going with this, I'm going somewhere. The reason I shared this earlier in my mentorship session with entrepreneurs, because one of them was feeling like, man, I just been praying to God. And I was praying so hard for this deal to come through and it didn't happen. And I said, is it possible? Could it be possible? God's already gone ahead of you and worked it out. You just don't know what it's going to be yet. Is it possible that he's already gone ahead of you and worked it out? That's why I shared that story about my son. And as I shared that story, she just started bawling and crying because she's like, oh, my gosh, that's such a beautiful story that relates to what I'm feeling right now because I'm trying to do what's right. And I'm praying and I'm worshiping God and I'm, I'm doing everything I know to do. But yet he still didn't allow this situation to happen. And it immediately made me think about that situation with my son. When I, when I, I was looking at him and looking at he's doing, he's so distressed about all of this. He don't know we already don't bought it. <laughs> it's already worked out. It's already upstairs waiting for him. He's going to get it in the next couple of days. And he didn't even know. And so something that did something to her and it opened up her, up her eyes to see, man, I got to trust and know the character of God. That, thank you all for all the hearts. I see it coming in. You know, I got it's something about his character. No matter what I go through, even a week or so ago when I launched the, the necessary retreat and I began to make announcements about it, you guys don't know what happened on the back end. Some pretty some 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 pretty bad things happened on the back end right after making the announcement, and I knew that it was the enemy. And and for only a half of a second, I was like, wait a minute, God. We're trying to take people on a 12 week journey so their lives can be radically transformed where they don't even realize who they are anymore because you've changed them and and helped them so much. How could you let this happen with, you know, I don't even want to give the enemy any clout, but a situation that happened. Right. God had already gone ahead of me and worked the whole thing out. I just didn't know he actually had something better set up for us. So I said to myself when I went into my office, I know I drifted a minute. You guys know I drift a minute to come back. So I'm coming back. But when I went into my office right after this bad situation happened, you want to know the first thing that I did? I lifted my hands in praise to God. And I said, God, thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity to draw closer to you. My staff looked at me and they said, Z, I don't know how you do it. I says, no, 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 no. You guys got to see. You got to know something about the character of God. That's why I'm trying to get you guys to read for five doggone minutes. When you understand his character, 
and you understand the nature of who he is and you can get yourself in that flow and you understand how he operates and what he does, then you're able to sit back with wisdom, discernment. You're able to, you're able to preserve sound judgment. So instead of just falling out on the flow, you know, and as I tell my kids acting a fool, right? God don't love me. He don't, and I'm not mimicking anybody. So I want to be sensitive in how I'm saying this, but you get my point. You know, is he even hearing my prayers? Does he see? No, 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 no. You're going to preserve that sound judgment. It says, oh, God's doing something. So imagine 40 minutes before you launch this retreat thing, you finding out all this bad news that happened that interrupts the service and all of that. And I went in my office and I said, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation to draw closer to you. Thank you now that I get to go higher in the spirit and I get to look down at this situation and stand above it. Thank you that you're showing me that I can overcome all things. My staff looked at me and said, Z, are you still going to have the, the pre-launch meeting? We got all these people waiting. We don't even have our services. Everything went down. I says, not only are we going to have the meeting, it's going to be the best meeting we ever had because now I'm about to teach them how to overcome opposition. I'm about to teach them how to stop responding to opposition this way. We're going to respond to it this way. We're going to lift up praise and worship before God. You get my point? I know I went left field a minute, but that comes from wisdom, discernment, preserving sound judgment. So as situations begin to present itself in your life, you're able to look at it with the right lenses, baby. That's why I'm begging you. Can you spend just five minutes a day? Just five minutes of your time going through the word. I'm going to do my very best with the strength that God gives me to spend as much time as I can, 5, 10, 20 minutes in the evening to have these little powwow, little Bible discussions. But I need for you to get, not me, you need to get strengthened on your own with going through the word. So as you go throughout your day and things begin to happen, you can, I, I like to say, adjust your spiritual goggles. You can adjust your spiritual eyes and see things the right way. But you got to walk in wisdom. You have to have sound judgment. You have to have discernment. And you're going to get that from sitting your little butt down, praying before God, spending even if it's five minutes into your word. Go in your closet, close your door, and just sing a song to God. Because praise is a secret weapon. Now, I'm going to leave it there because I got to go live on my other platforms now. I didn't bring enough devices home with me, so... I don't know what I was thinking. I kind of forgot. But anyway, so now I got to go live on my, um, I don't know, I think on my Facebook and Instagram. They've, they've probably been waiting on me already for the last 30 minutes. Uh, but I got to go live on there and encourage them. But was this encouraging to you all? Let me just see a few comments here. I uh, just want to know if this is helping you all. Um, I'm doing my very best to walk in obedience to what God is sharing in my heart to do. And maybe it's only going to help one or two people, but I'm doing my very best. Please know that I am. As I'm in a grieving mode myself, uh, it's coming up on my son's birthday. And as it gets closer to his birthday during this time of the year, it's very difficult for me. So this actually gives me life to be able to talk to you all. It actually encourages me. But has this been helping you? Eve says it helps me. Uh, I, America Brown. That's a nice name, by the way, baby. She said, yes, thank you. Um, uh, Depan says, Jesus, you helped me when I was depressed three years ago, baby, you're going to get me crying. You're going to get me crying. That's around the time I started my podcast. Someone says, yes, will you be back tomorrow? If it is God's will, I'm going to keep doing what he's telling me to do, which is to go live at nighttime and just, uh, read, uh, some words to, to people. What time do you go live daily? Uh, right now, this is going to be at nighttime where I'm going to do this little Bible study reading. Um, um, Gifted Within says, this was great. Thank you, Z. Someone says, thank you, Z. This was extremely helpful. Stand in the word. David says, well, keep your mind focused on what God said, not on what is going on. Yes, it is a blessing. David, that is such a powerful thing that you just said. I'm going to do my best not to deviate because I really want to comment quite a bit on that. Um, this whole 12 week retreat, you guys, and please keep us in prayer, um, that I just launched and you can go to my website at zenjaglass.com to sign up for it. If you wish to be in it, um, that's really what it's all about being completely transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the first three weeks of this retreat, we're, we're, we're spending just on who are you, you know, what makes you happy? Do you even know what your gifts are? Second three weeks is going to be pretty tough because those are the three weeks on letting go. It's hard to scale a mountain when you got all these big boulders and big rocks on your back and you're trying to carry everybody's burdens, which I know a lot of you are. 
third three weeks is on preparation. How in the world do you prepare for what's ahead? Learning how to deal with opposition, like the story I just shared with you about when everything went haywire just a few minutes before we went live to launch the retreat. And the last three weeks is on mastery. And that's when you're putting those systems and structures and things in place for the new you, for the new territory God's given you. So I'm glad that you said that, baby, because um, this 12-week retreat, this is what this is all about. But if anyone wants to get on there, you just go to zenjaglass.com and go ahead and sign up. Um, if you're not able to sign up at this time, at the very least, go there and take that challenge. There's a challenge on my homepage called Get Unstuck. I challenge you to take that Get Unstuck challenge. It's about 15 minutes, and it's a challenge that will walk you through how do you get unstuck from a cage mindset. So at the very least, you want to do that. And for those that I met today, it was so good seeing you guys. I know I did Zoom calls all throughout the day. I'm going to do it again tomorrow, a lot of Zoom calls. So um, if you go to... Um, I don't even know what platforms I'm on now. I get a little confused. I know on my link tree, um, I've got the link on there to join my Zoom meeting. So if anyone actually wants to meet and talk with me a little bit and talk about the retreat, I'm going to be live a couple of times tomorrow on Zoom just to meet you. Um, so um, you can go to zenjaglass.com and you can go to the Contact Us page and you can even click Join the Retreat Waitlist. The waitlist, if you're not ready to join now, just do join waitlist and you're going to get an email in the morning from my staff inviting you to a Zoom call tomorrow to meet and talk with me. So you guys got all kind of options and ways that we can meet and talk. I love you all. Uh, uh, someone says, thanks again for reaching out. Uh, what time? Because I live in California. I don't know what state you're in. So uh, it's multiple times tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. and I know 3 p.m. and I might put one more in there because um, Central Standard Time. I'm going to be having meetings tomorrow. But with the retreat, the retreat is something where you go at your own pace. So don't feel like you missed out on it. You can join the retreat. You literally can join right now and get in there and start going through the lessons right now. And the warm-up exercises that I have in there right now, start going through them. And then on Monday is uh, when the next uh, module is released and I'm going to be meeting everybody. But anyway, uh, May says, this helps me, reminds me of what's a priority, understanding God's word. Um, Nicole says, thank you, Z. You have no idea how encouraging you've been to me. I'm so glad to hear that, Nicole. I'm simply doing my very best. I really, really, really am doing my very best. Um, Zakia says, you pulled me out of a deep depression last year. I love you, Z. That touches my heart, baby. You know, I want to talk on that just a little bit, um, Zakia, because I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm not a licensed minister. Uh, in fact, if you do join the retreat, there's a waiver you have to sign off, acknowledging that you are aware of that. So if you guys need any professional services, always reach out to the professionals um, and get the help that you need. But I'm really glad, um, Zakir, that you said that because, um, you guys, everyone can benefit from the things we go through in life. Don't ever feel like your pain is in vain and the things that you've experienced and gone through. You could not have told me in a million years with all the things that I've gone through that God would turn around. Have me write that book called Necessary. Many of you guys are aware of my book and that it would inspire and encourage people all over the world. I never knew that my pain had a purpose, that there was a purpose behind it. Some of you may be going through those stages right now. And I pray that that I, my life, as you see my life, that is encouraging you to keep going, baby. Don't give up. Don't give up. And as I say, don't waste that pain. Turn around and use it for the glory of God. Because there are certain people that only you can reach because of what you've gone through. I wouldn't be able to sit here talking to you right now. I would be in there watching TV, eating some ice cream and chilling and not thinking about nobody. But because of all the mess I went through, all the mess that God pulled me through, all the ups and downs from health issues, relationship issues, financial issues, losing my son, losing my mother, going through so much, being betrayed by friends because of all that God pulled me through and humbled my little butt and changed my heart around. I can't help but speak about them. I don't feel forced to do this. I'm not doing this to sell a book or a retreat. I'm doing this because I love God and this is my way of showing my love back to him. I'm doing this because I have a genuine love in my heart to help people. That's why I'm doing it. It's an overflow. And many of you are going through things and you got to understand that God is going to allow that overflow to come from you as well if you allow that spring to flow through you. Anyway, I'm getting into something else and I, I got to get off this live because I've got people on Facebook and I think Instagram that are waiting on me. 
I love you guys. So I'll see you tomorrow night around the same time. Um, Dorothy says she's starting with the warm up exercises tonight. That's right, Dorothy. I think you joined today uh, my retreat. Yes, make sure you go through those warm up exercises, Dorothy, because that walks you through um, some pretty serious processes and steps that's going to help you have the right mindset for this 12 week journey that you're going to go on with me through this um, this 12 week retreat. So please make sure you start on that. Um, Nicole says, thank you, darling. You're a part of God's plan for a lot of people. Thank you so much for encouraging me. I love you all. I love you all. Someone says, um, Eibling says, you encouraged me to pursue my faith-based girls program. Oh, I'd love to hear more about that. I'd love to hear more about that. Make sure you send me a message or something. A faith-based girls program. Love that. Um, and so, hey, Z, I'm a paraplegic with chronic pain. Thank you, baby. I'm going to be lifting you in prayer. OK. All right. I love you all. I've got to get on Facebook and Instagram now because I know they're waiting on me. But I pray this has encouraged you all. I want to leave you with this. Please just spend five minutes. OK, five minutes is what you guys committed to. So tomorrow I'm going to ask you the same thing. I'm going to try to go live around 7, 7, 15 or so. Um, and that's pretty special for me to go live on a Friday night because normally from Friday evening to Saturday evening, you can't even find me. That's really my time where I just kind of shut the world out completely and I'm completely in prayer and meditation. But I feel like this is a part of that. So I'm going to still, if it's God's will, go live tomorrow night around the same time. But I love you guys. I really got to go because people have been waiting on me in the other platform for almost 35 minutes now. And I got to uh, go live on that platform and get my butt to bed. I love you guys. See you tomorrow. And um, for those who are just joining on, um, you're welcome to consider my uh, necessary retreat. That's on my website at zenjaglass.com. And um, make sure you um, join the Zoom um, um, uh, links tomorrow so I can meet you face to face and officially welcome you um, into the retreat. Love you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.